What's going on guys? It's Brandon. I got a car video for you guys today. It's uh, no Ferrari or Lamborghini like some of these guys on YouTube, but I actually just picked up this uh, brand new 2023 Jeep Grand Cherokee Limited. Uh, this thing's actually pretty sick. I want to take a minute to show you guys the most useless feature you will ever see in the world, but it's kind of funny, uh, kind of cool. I like to show it off. So this car not only has the middle display, uh, which is pretty sweet, but you have a passenger side display for if the passenger is too lazy to reach over, you know, three inches to the middle display, they can use the display right in front of them. It's uh, cool, I guess, and it costs a little bit extra, but it is like the most useless feature in the world. I don't think that is going to get used kind of whatsoever, but it's there, so I like to show people it. But uh, the point of today's video, I wanna talk about downsizing your watch collection, and if you should downsize your watch collection, a lot of people think downsizing your watch collection is a sign of maturity in this hobby. And I definitely agree with that point. And I'm going to tell you guys why. Uh, I know some of you guys are gonna comment, no watch today. I just came back from the gym. Baby's inside the house sleeping, uh, hence why I'm in the car. But uh, no watch today, I'm gonna go on inside and I'm gonna put on the big reason why I'm downsizing my watch collection. I just got the Explorer 2. This is the newest iteration of the Rolex Explorer 2. I picked this up straight from the AD and it's quite an expensive watch. So I have to downsize my watch collection a little bit. I had a 14 watch collection. I'm knocking it right down to a uh, probably five possibly uh, six if I keep my G-Shock, which is, you know, only a $99 watch. I should have put it on this morning as my gym watch, which I usually do, but I just uh, rushed out of the house this morning. I'm going to be keeping my Rolex Explorer 2, my OP41, my Rolex OP41 green dial, uh, my Seiko Alpinist, the older Saab 017, which is the watch I got married in, super sentimental watch. My uh, Panerai Luminor Marina, which is an incredible watch. Definitely going to hold on to that one. And my Omega Seamaster uh, gray dial with the blue bezel. I'm going to be holding on to that one as well. So I will have this core five watch collection, six if we add in the G-Shock. But I'm knocking it basically down by half. And why am I doing that? Well, guys, I've, I've spent a lot of money. Uh, I'm your average dude, you know what I mean? Um, I do have my uh, doctorate from school. I'm a doctor of physical therapy. I do have a pretty good job. It wasn't easy, you know, for me to maintain, but I'm not a surgeon. I'm not a lawyer. I don't make these uh, crazy amounts of money, you know what I mean? So to me, I've spent a, a decent amount of money on these watches, and now I want to do them justice. Having 14 watches compared to five or six, at whatever level of income you guys at, I think it's a little financially uh, irresponsible at some point to keep buying watches when you have watches. You know, I've realized I have these watches I love. I have watches I never thought I would own, like my Seamaster, like my Panerai, like my Rolex Explorer 2, which was my Grail watch. I want to enjoy these watches now. Really, just one of those watches makes a good one watch collection that you can truly wear every day for decades and pass on to your children, which is what I want to do. So that's what I want to do. I have my, you know, five watches. Maybe one day I will take something out of my collection and put in another piece in lieu of that piece. But I just can't right now, you know, in good faith, keep buying watches uh, while I have these, these pieces. I want to wear these pieces, enjoy these pieces, give them the wrist time that they actually deserve so I can wear, you know, my Rolex Explorer 2 day after day after day, whether it's hiking, whether it's, you know, bike rides with my daughter, uh, going to work. I'm attaching all these memories to that watch and that only comes if you're able to put on you know a lot of wrist time 
on this watch. Another thing I want to talk about is when you tie up money like this in watches, you should probably insure your watches so that your watches, if, if something happened, you know, I'm not assuming I'm going to get robbed. I'm a mixed martial artist. Um, I'm pretty sure that any situation arises one-on-one, uh, -on -one, I'm going to handle that situation. I would even go as far as to say two-on-one -on -one to three-on-one. -on -one. I'm probably going to handle that situation. Uh, I'm not scared. And, and you guys have probably seen my video. I had a place, someone was attacking a woman, and I placed them in citizen's arrest. I took them down, threw them in a Kimura. Um, so I can handle myself. I'm not worried about getting robbed. I also do always carry a firearm in my fanny pack or in my uh, waist strap. So I'm, I'm always armed. I'm always ready, you know, for whatever happens. So I don't think I'm going to get robbed per se. But that's not all you guys. That's not all of you guys. A lot of my viewers do comment on me that they're scared to get robbed. Ensure your watches. So if something like that happens, you don't have to worry about it. You're covered and you're safe it doesn't cost that much money to insure these watches but it does if you're insuring 20 30 watches now you're spending thousands of dollars every year to insure these watches for something that's probably not even going to happen you, it, nothing is probably going to happen your house probably isn't going to light on fire and no one's probably going to steal your watches so to throw that money away, I mean, you are probably throwing the money away, but it is good to have the peace of mind. If you have a smaller core collection, you're able to do that. You're able to get that peace of mind. If you have 30 watches, that's a lot of money now that you're putting up to insure these watches. And the other thing I want to talk about is servicing your watches. I will be honest with you guys. I have never serviced any of my watches. I know a lot of you guys are probably the same way because... They've never had any problems. Even my long jeans, was, which was pretty much the first watch that I got, the first luxury watch, it keeps perfect time. Because I had so many watches, I would rotate through my watches, so I'm wearing them a little bit. It would keep them lubricated, and then, but it wouldn't be, you know, too, too much wear through these watches. Uh, I don't bang them around too much, so like, they've always kept perfect time. And Hans, you know, has said it basically on Federico Talks Watches, who's an expert watchmaker. Um, if it's not broken, you know, don't fix it. So I haven't serviced my watches, but I need to at some point service these watches. Um, my Panerai I just bought, I think it is running just a little bit slow. Um, when I do wear it, you know, for two weeks, I'll notice that maybe I'm like two minutes off, three minutes off. It doesn't seem to be happening all the time, but it seems to be happening sometimes. Uh, I'm just off a couple minutes. It's hard to tell on the Luminor anyway because there's no second hand. But um, I want to service these watches. And to do faithful service on these watches, maybe to get you know straps on these watches, that's extra costs that are associated with that. And having a, a core smaller collection is going to allow you to like uh, get the extra accessories for the watch, and especially a Panerai, which is a strap monster, but do the services on the watch. So I think downsizing and realizing, you know, you have, once you've attained some watches that you really, truly love, focus on those watches. Give them the wrist time they deserve. Service these watches. Ensure these watches. Do everything, you know, cross all your your check marks off so that you can really do these watches justice and enjoy them. I think that's kind of the perfect amount of watches. For me, everyone's different. Uh, some of you guys might want to fill up a whole box, 10 or 12 watches. Do you then if that works for you. But I think at some point, um, and I know some of you guys have a ton, a ton of watches. To do your watches justice, you know, I think at some point downsizing uh, might be the way to go, at least me personally. I want you to gui guys to let me know your opinion. Do you think downsizing your watch collection is a good idea? Did you agree with my points? Have you downsized your own watch collection or do you want, you know, a hundred watches? Do you, would you guys rather have less quality watches, which means maybe brands with more prestige, 
higher level of finishing, uh, more in-house movements, more expensive, of course, or would you rather have more um, lower price watches so you can experience more things? Uh, everybody is different, you know, in that aspect. So I'm really, really looking forward to hearing from you guys. And please guys, if you like today's video, please hit the subscription button. And even if you didn't like the video, hit the subscription button. It helps my channel out a lot. I do this as a hobby. I make very, very little money, uh, not even enough to cover any of my watches through my uh, YouTube ads. So if you guys subscribe to the channel, it really does help the channel a lot. It allows me to keep filming these videos uh, for you guys. So yeah, let me know down below. Please subscribe and I'll talk to you guys on the next one.